you. My name is Paweł. Uh, I come from Poland. However, I live in uh, Thailand. I'm a founder of a DevOps Codes company. We are registered uh, here in Singapore. Uh, currently, we are operating uh, within three engineers, uh, providing DevOps and cloud services to our clients. And today, I would like to share with you uh, about the solution uh, deploying in AWS by Code Pipeline, and we're gonna deploy to AWS ECS. If you'd like to contact with me, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, finding my uh, name and surname. But before we start, uh, I would like to share with you with a motto. This is my first meetup and uh, first lecture, so forgive me if I have a little bit of stress, but I think it's always uh, good to share with uh, something that will stay in your mind. And this is something that is very close to me. It's close to my mind and my heart. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. And this is uh, the culture that we are trying to implement and to evangelize with our clients, that it's always about the quickest feedback, about the quickest improvements. And it doesn't matter if we make any mistakes. It doesn't matter if we fail, as long as we take uh, the good thing from it, right? As long as we learn from it. So uh, why I decided to present this solution? Uh, we want to use one DNS record for multiple regions. We're going to have application load balancer that will be serving the traffic uh, to uh, our target group uh, registered with uh, tasks in uh, container service. We want to have uh, high availability and be fault tolerant. So if one of the region is going down, we're going to still be able to have our application up. It doesn't matter if this uh, load balancer will be serving uh, front-end or it will be our API or any other backend connected to databases. Also, we are using uh, Terraform because we want to have consistent infrastructure between regions and environments. Plus, we will have a control of deployment. We can decide, for example, uh, to which region we want to deploy first or do we want to deploy both at the same time. So in case of uh, we are deploying maybe to the region that is less important for us and it will fail, we will have less stress because the pipeline will do the rollback, right? So the clients, the users, they will not have, um, they will not observe any impact of it. This is a short diagram. I'm not a specialist with building slides, so this is the last slide and we will gonna jump into the um, web console and to the code. So the idea of it is that we're gonna uh, have a source. In our case, this is code commit. But as probably you know, it might be whatever, right? We can connect uh, code pipeline with GitHub, with Bitbucket, or do any other custom synchronization. But in our case, we're going to have a, um, our backend code in Python uh, in code commit. So whatever there is a match to the master branch, this will use an Amazon events to trigger the pipeline, which will do the build uh, of the container image, then we will push it to the container registry. And as the next step, the code pipeline will uh, perform deployment. And we have two additional accounts because what I was describing so far is happening in one account. We call it, let's say, shared account, DevOps account. And then we have this um, connection, that this trust relationship between uh, our test account and production account. There's another feature that I used here, it's res resource access manager. So I have created two VPCs in both regions in the shared account, and I shared them to the both um, accounts, right? So you can see that the test account is uh, using um, AP Southeast one and EU Central one. And this VPC is coming from the shared account, the same with the production account. Okay, let's go to the browser. So the pipeline, it looks quite simple. We have the source code and I have triggered it just before we uh, started the meetup. 
Um, we performed the build with AWS code build. It was a simple Docker build and Docker push to the container registry. And this is where the magic is coming for me because when we go to the code pipeline and we want to create a code pipeline from the browser, we can go to the deploy stage and we can choose ECS. We can choose multiple regions, but we cannot choose a different account. This is not possible from the browser, but we can do it with an API code, or we can use it Terraform or CloudFormation for that. So that's the um, tip that I wanted to share with you, that we cannot use it from the browser. So as you can see, 20 minutes ago, we have deployed a version of uh, our code. I will show you how does it look in the browser. It's very simple. We are just returning a JSON. It's a Python Flask application. So we have a greetings from the account starting with 05. This is our test account. The region is here central because currently I'm connected to the VPN to Poland. And this is the new version during AWS meetup. On production, we still have the uh, previous version of the code. When we have only, this is another version. But you can see that there's a different account here. So I will just trigger. And we have a manual approval here, which it's up to us, right? It depends on the application. If we have a lot of automated tests and we are pretty sure that if everything is going well on the stage, we can skip that um, action. But I wanted just to pause it here and then we're going to have a deployment. So in my case, I'm deploying first to the uh, European region. If we, we can have it parallel, right, at the same uh, level. So we can take a look how it will go. OK, we are triggering. And from the console, here we have a link, like, but when we are clicking, and I'm using uh, SSO, so I will not be able to see this uh, cluster. It's because of uh, we would have to change the, uh, the row. Doesn't matter if you're using here, or we could do it SSO. OK, so let the pipeline go. And I would like to show you a little bit of the code. So as I was uh, telling, we have a simple backend. It's a simple Flask application. We are using environment variables. So the structure of the code, uh, I decided to make it uh, one Terraform module for the shared account. This is where we have um, VPCs that I was mentioned. I'm using uh, modules for that. So we are using AWS provider. I'm not sure if this is big enough for you. Maybe I will make it a little bit bigger. OK. So we have two VPCs. One is uh, in uh, AP Southeast one. One is in Europe. One of the challenge using Terraform for that, uh, this is one of the tips that I want to share with you, is when using uh, Resource Access Manager, I decided to use for each function in Terraform. And I had a problem for that because we have already using a module with VPC. So uh, for each will not take any dynamic uh, data coming from other modules. So that's why I put this comment uh, inside the code that for the initial uh, provision, we would have to either take it out or comment it out before we can uh, run it. This is something that I met with Terraform. It's kind of a limitation, but uh, yeah, it's for sure worth to know. So speaking about the code pipeline and the tasks, things that we have to uh, remember is that we have to provide two S3 buckets in both regions. And for these buckets, we have to um, create our KMS uh, key for encryption. And of course, our uh, code pipeline, we need to provide specific roles for that. So the first stage is source. We are using code commit here. Not a big deal. And then we have a code build. And when we go to the deployment stage, 
this is where we have to configure. So the standard configuration when we are using uh, the same account will be only this part of the code. But when we are uh, triggering ECS cluster from a different account, here is, of course, not the best practice. It's hard coded area. Um, but we can, of course, refer to another resource. But thanks to um, providing this uh, role, which is from the test account, and we are defining the region, we are pointing code pipeline to do the deployment. So this is the thing that we cannot do from the web console. Then we have uh, the second deployment, second region, and we can configure the order here, right? So if you would like to have it uh, to run at the same time, then we can change the order and they will be executed at the same time. We have the approval step, and then we have a similar configuration for the production. Also, what I was thinking about when I was uh, creating this code from the shared account, when we are using uh, different providers, I decided to um, add a provider that will have an access. Here I'm using a default organization account access role, but of course we can create a specific one on both of the test and production accounts. And I have done it uh, to have a small sub-module with IM role, which will allow us to interact with the ECS service. So to have it deployed by once, right? When we deploy um, this part of code, we will already have prepared the roles on both of the accounts. I have also a module here for the, let's say, backend part, right? So this will be the load balancer with target group, all the security groups, configuration of the cluster, one service plus task definition. And this is also one thing that I want to share with you that uh, it might be challenging while using ECS because when we use it with uh, Terraform, I think also with CloudFormation, we have to specific an image when we are providing the service for the first time. And we have to define some image here. So, of course, we can put any placeholder here, like Nginx, right? If there's it's not non-production and we just to have it run it before in the beginning. But later on, when we're gonna do any changes, let's say we want to increase the CPU or the memory here, or add a different environment or secrets or any other thing, Terraform will try to revert that task definition to the previous image. How I solve it here? It's um, I'm pointing here to the environment, which in my case will be test or prod. And in the code build, while I'm building the application, nothing. so I'm using uh, the commit tag from the uh, SHA from the git. I'm just cutting it uh, to have uh, seven symbols. But when I build this um, image, I'm also tagging it to have a test and prod and push it to the repository. So I will know if we are using this strategy, of course, using one um, branch, because we can also go with the Git flow, it will look a little bit different. But in this case, just to have it simple, anytime I'm uh, pushing a new um, code on the master, then I will know that even currently I'm running on ECS uh, image with a part of the Mm, commit tag. If, why, if I uh, do any changes in the Terraform code and it will revert the task, the, not revert, but it will create a new task definition referring to prod, we'll have the same application version. Okay, we see that the production is deployed. So I guess if we refresh the page here, then we have a new message. So when I disconnect from the VPN, the region should change. And we see that now we are in AP Southeast. We are still using the same DNS and the same will happen with a test environment. One thing to remember, because I'm using here root 53 geolocation strategy. So um, I 
decided when I'm passing some um, data down to the module, um, I, I have to ensure that whenever uh, somebody is going from the another region, he can still reach the application because if we would like to use only Asia and Europe, so the people from the other regions, they will not be able to reach our application. So when we have this uh, country white card, it will make a default policy. And we can see it in route 53 here. This is the default one. It's pointing to AP Southeast one. It means that the Singapore region for us is the most important. And uh, if anybody is going from different region, he will come up to us, right? So if we take a look at the DNS checker, we refresh, we see that we can resolve our DNS all around the world. But if we just change it from default to Asia, I guess it will take maybe 10, 30 seconds, but we're going to start seeing here that some of the regions, some of the points, they will not be able to resolve the DNS, right? So this is an important thing to remember if you want to configure a geolocation in front of uh, any of your resources with root 53 to have at least one default. It's a different thing when we are using uh, latency. Latency will always try to find the, the, the closest um, place to be able to connect. Thank you. I think that's all that I wanted to share with you today. If you have any questions, you can catch me somewhere around here. I hope you get some value from it and have a good evening. I guess uh, I would configure it uh, whenever, whichever tool I would be using with code build, I would ensure if uh, there is some output that is not satisfying me, I would cause a fail. So we can do it either with exit one, we can do some additional scripting inside the code build to ensure that um, something is uh, preventing us from further deployment. Okay, so let me give you one scenario. So let's suppose that I want to check the code smell, all the vulnerability. So you mean to say that uh, for that I can use the sonar queue. Uh, so for the sonar queue, I need to uh, integrate inside the code build, uh, right? And inside, I mean, let's suppose that if I write the pipeline into group B or some other, then uh, where we need to pass the sonar queue URL, right? That is the mean. The third party tool, that's how we can integrate. I'm sorry, I don't have so much experience with SonarQ, but uh, yeah, I would do some checks uh, from different pipeline. For example, I was working with a different uh, vendor. We had some problem with one of, one of the tools, uh, JQ, which is interacting with uh, JSON files. And we had a problem that JQ, there was some mistake in the path. And JQ was uh, throwing out, I think, code 2, and the pipeline was going on, right? So nobody noticed it for some time. So. I guess each case will be individual to, to, to catch up the error or catch up the output that you will be getting during your pipeline. Uh, except uh, apart from like, uh, is there any functionality we can introduce the Groovy language? I mean, I, I'm not much familiar with the AWS CICD, uh, mostly with the Jenkins bucket and GitLab CICD practices. But uh, just for my knowledge perspective, I mean, can we introduce the Groovy 
Ruby can be right. Uh, the CI/CD pipeline used to the Ruby language. I think this would be a question to somebody from AWS, not from me. <laughs> um, you can reach out to us. I'll speak with you off like, yeah, we'll, we'll point you to some of our athletes. All right. Yeah, um, the question is, uh, I saw that uh, you implemented with the Wanda Lancer ECS, and we are uh, actually accessing the ECS services, right, through load balancer. So the question is, uh, without load balancer, is there any method like I can uh, assign static IP address to ECS and access it? Sorry, uh, could you repeat? Without load balancer, is there any method I can actually access the ECS? Uh, the IP address will dynamically actually change, so I want to make it like some other option. AWS has uh, something like execute, so we can also add additional permissions, uh, and it's uh, it's quite well described on AWS blocks. I was testing that with one of the projects that we can perform uh, something like you know Docker exec inside the container, so we can connect it using AWS CLI to connect to the tasks and uh, perform inside. If, the, if that was the question, right? You would like to, to connect to the running container, which is? Um, it's actually running container, the application running on the container, right? So there will be like a dynamic IP address assigned to the ACS, and then it will from outside, I would say no, because uh, we are deploying, the, in my case, we are deploying containers, tasks to the private subnets, so either you would need to have uh, um, some bastion host to reach out to the IP directly, but I think that would be some custom solution, right? So in this solution, yeah, we have dynamic IPs, but the ECS is doing for us. It's registering the target, uh, the task to the target group. So it's doing automatically when there's the deployment. So I guess we can have uh, these um, tasks uh, registered to the target group, but then we have to somehow point out to them or maybe query the target group to get these IPs and connect. To be honest, I haven't done it before, so I'm just guessing from my experience that I would go into this direction and try to look there. Yeah, thank you. Actually. We have some kind of use case because uh, we are not on board of the load balancer services, but we are uh, running on the Firegate ECS. So I was wondering, like, is there any solution? Thank you. You're welcome. To connect to the uh, task, it is possible on Firegate using AWS CLI. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.